but it did not but it did not come with the new special database, so unfortunately. So if I were to do that, I'd have to make a new one, which I really don't want to do. Hmm. I'll have to look to see if uh, any of the techs have an example how to make that. So I'm going to stick with the example right now, because uh, it does have the special database. Okay, uh, maybe uh, I will also do the same with the example and yep. I'll assign another uh, with the name of the customer. Yep. And then uh, afterwards uh, we will go to the assets. So let's uh, make uh, one here. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do for asset. So when you're creating asset, there's a few things you want to do. Um, once you have the kind of the database hierarchy, uh, the way it sets up is exists into area machine point and the point you can go ahead and customize quite a bit of information which I'll go into in a moment and then finally you have your sample so it's a one two three four really a five point Stage. assets five structure five tables five tables First one would be the machine. Mm -hmm. So if I want to create a whole new one from scratch here. Yes, please. <coughs> um, I made one in train, but I'll go through it again here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the database folder. I'm going to click on add area. Area. It'll typically come up with its own ID name. But you can, uh, it's always good for you to put the new name for it there. Okay. So today we'll do mini lab training. That new, that new area will show up at the bottom of the list depending on how I put the ID code. Okay. I will then go ahead and right select that area and I'm going to add an equipment. Add equipment. And just like that beforehand, I get to give it a name if I want. So I could do my car. Underneath that, I'll be able to add point. If I want to go ahead and make another equipment, I could just again <laughs> okay, no select that. Uh, and I could do another one called my truck. My so that truck. way I, I'm making my asset structure as I need. Good, good. So if I want to go after equipment, is point. So, for example, in point, this is where you can do a lot of customization. Most of this does not matter, but there's a few things that are very important. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, description. I could say this is my engine oil. I could also have transmission or whatever else I need to look at. Um, uh, equipment ke baad, uh, after equipment, it's uh, the point. Correct. Three, one. And uh, in the area, I can give the customer name. Yes, you could. So that he identifies that it's my mm -hmm. area and uh, afterwards uh, trucks and buses and uh, whatever it is. Correct. And after that in the point, I can have uh, the engine, transmission, uh, gear, Precisely. gearbox, whatever it is. Correct. Okay. Uh, this is the three points. Four um, points. After that is going to be sam the actual sample itself. So that's what you're going to actually be trying to make. So it's going to be only four, not five. Well, the first one was the area. I'm sorry, it's the database itself, which ah. you could technically do if like, you had two different locations. You could have two different ones if you really wanted to do that. Although, honestly, it's kind of easy to keep it underneath one. Okay. It uh, should be in the example, it's okay. Yeah. Example RBM, then uh, area, then equipment, point, and then sample. And then sample. Will be a lot easier, mm -hmm. so I'll not bother you more. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I'll keep you talk, calling. All right. So yeah. once I'm in the point level, um, there's a lot of customization that you can do. As you can see here, you can do uh, what kind of language you want, as far as English, CSI default. If there's not what is that uh, CSI default? If uh, I leave I it to CSI default, then it's okay. I think that's just kind of going to be in English how they do, how they uh, represent everything. Okay. So that's why I typically have it as uh, always. And what is that uh, uh, report group? Report group Leave actually, it like that? report group, um, that references the AP set. So if I go ahead and click on the AP set here, you're going to see over here there's a report group. 
what the report group does is based on the parameters you selected previously um, you could create very brief quickly a report a, a report for a group one such as management or you could have a report for group two such as your technicians because a lot of times they're not looking at the same exact information so that way you're not just having one generic report that no one can understand you can kind of cater it to your audience so typically recommend to just not deal with this too much unless you really need it just have all it on one report unless you really want to customize and gain more familiar with the system so with that being said if we go back to your point that's what report group is you're basically saying what what kind of report you want uh, to yeah. list this and all I understand mm -hmm. uh, usage use usage units basically you're tracking how, how often you want to um, do maintenance on it you can do hours you can do days months miles kilometers uh, really just more of a customization type thing okay get an ISO target cleanliness this is uh, this is all uh, default this I is, cannot change it nope they can change this as much as you want none of this is required to run samples this is customization so it's, this is why this, this software is very powerful in the sense that you can do a lot of customization, but none of it is really required, depending on how the customer wants, how much the customer wants to make this their own. So what does it mean by the ISO 4, or 6, or 14? It's an example. Um, basically saying this is your target cleanliness. So the, so the default is 21, 18, 15, but this what is does just it mean? an example. Uh, the particle size? Uh, that's probably going to be the ISO codes. So if you're familiar with ISO <coughs> codes, each one of those numbers um, really uh, reflects a certain range of how many particles for um, less than 4 micron then after 10 micron and yeah for this ISO yeah. code you're looking at if I leave it in 21 like that. for 4 18 for 6 and 15 for 14 size microns uh, it is like we use when we operate the laser net is exactly. it right it is you can select so the, uh, the ISO code it like uh, as a default um, customer would customer would determine if they want to deal with it at all, or if they want to customize it. So what they actually, actually, actually does it does it has not know anything. Oh, so yes, yes, my question. Uh, blank. Okay. So and I would rather like would not to worry about this yet. Yeah. Do, so. Does it has any any effect on the uh, result? Um, I think this will more or less affect an alarm. So I no, think it's alarm. affected by the alarms that you get created for them as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the alarm is going to influence this as opposed to the other way around. And uh, how, where it will appear? At the report or where? Uh, it won't report at all. If, if, it, if, the alarm, if something triggers an alarm, it will show highlighted yellow if it's a low alarm or red if it's a high alarm. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this you can also <coughs> kind of tell you how many, what the capacity of your, what you're using is. Like a car might be a couple pints, a cruise ship would be a few hundred gallons. Mm -hmm. So this is just kind of so basically when someone, if I came on site, if someone had this all set up, I could know exactly everything about their uh, unit. Now the things that you really want to be aware of, uh, that's important to you, is AP set. Like I said, you have the spectral AP set. Mm -hmm. If you're not referencing it, all the work you put into it um, is going to be useless. Okay. Um, this is something so that... Here I should mm -hmm. select always the spectral AP set. Correct. Okay. Oh. That's a good point. Um, so one thing that you do want to be careful about, typically more if you are on someone's site who already had oil view, is if you change someone's AP set, if you change it, you're changing the AP that they're looking at or parameters. So if AP set number one was looking at dielectric constant, and then you're checking the AP set number two, which does not look at that. Not only are you not going to no longer import that information, of course. but you're going to remove that entire line for dielectric constant. That means the customer could lose all historical information on that. So this is just like the internally address. So if I go into wrong address and calling someone, it, it will not be here. Mm -hmm. Just like that. But one more, th one more step on that one is if you had a bunch of messages from that individual, once you change their number, you're going to lose all okay. historical messages uh, as well. Okay. So that's why it warns you at the <coughs> beginning. It says changing the AP set for this point may result in data loss. Okay. You will also need to change the law limit set. 
view which continue continue. So seeing this, especially since this is a new install, I'm gonna hit yep, no problem because I'm not gonna lose any data. So it then tells me which AP sets I'm losing. So if you did have a customer that I could look at this real quickly and say, do you care about any of these? And if they say, nope, don't care about any of them, mm -hmm. hit okay. If they say, I, I care about the um, counts greater than 10, I can hit cancel on this, I then go to my AP set and make sure so that it's checked it's off, okay. and then do this again, make sure that they have no issue with what they're losing. Okay. Again, since this is a new install for you, so don't worry about so it doesn't all, matter. Because oh. if they say, oh, I did want that, then you can, okay, I'll <coughs> add it now. You're not losing any historical data. So now it's just saying I don't have any alarm sets right now for it, which makes sense because this is a new point. So after I check an AP set, there is an alarm set down here. The alarm sets are shown up to underneath, under, underneath every AP set. So if I expand this AP set, you'll see that I have a few alarms already created. This now, is by default? Created by default? Nope. Uh, I think a lot of times you have to make your own. Mm -hmm. So this is something that um, this will take knowledge on your point to know what they want for their cleanliness levels. Uh -huh. um, okay. If they are completely... There is no default. There's. I don't think there's a default. Uh -huh. So for example, if I... This is a this was a created as you can see as a test. It has no alarms underneath it, and creating an alarm is just as easy as creating a, a sample point. I'm just gonna right click it and add user alarm, and then you can go ahead and select which kind you want. So if it, they had an engine, there's several engines that they can uh, basically mm. select to so do that. So if it's uh, already not there. So uh, it will not give you any. Can alarm. I copy it from here? Um, I'm not sure if there's a good way to copy this. I think it's something you actually do have to create. So um, the fluid scan, uh, what I can probably get you is I can get you some generic alarms from that fluid scan. So if you know what oil they're gonna be running against it, that has some good rule of thumb um, alarms for chemistry oil. Um, LNF, that really, as far as what particle cleanliness levels they want, that really needs to be discussed with the customer. And the viscosity is something else that they also need to be aware of. <coughs> Maybe for the laser net to have to make alarm according to the ISO, ISO code. Correct. If it is past this ISO code, so it's okay. If not, it make alarm. But how can we do that here? If, we're, uh, I, uh, if I don't create an uh, alarm, so what will it do? It will just tell that this much is the yep. If you do not create an alarm, then it will just report the findings. It will not give them any indication of, all right, this is going to dangerous territory. Of course, because I have not told them that uh, you should act upon it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So for example, if I look at my spectro, uh, I don't see it right now. I don't have any other engine except for a diesel engine. Mm -hmm. So if I went to add user alarm, and with the engines, I could say I now have a normal gas engine. So maybe engine other gasoline. Res reciprocating gas engine. Oh, reciprocal? You yes, see that? Reciprocating gas gasoline engine. Okay. So if I go ahead and select that, it already has some typical things that you look for. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you can see here that all, all the zero. alarms are baseless. Yeah. So it does kind of expect you to go ahead and put it in there. So I could say I want my ISO, uh, it wants an ID, so I'll just... What ID should give it? I don't think it needs the ID, actually, now that I think about it. But it just wants alarm, so I can say gasoline engine. Okay. No need for ID. No. Where will oh, it the ID, yeah? What the ID does is... It puts something in there to try to make it chronological. Oh, okay. okay. And no you can problem. always edit it afterwards. So you can go I'll edit there. If I want to make it 121, so it falls so it the end of that. At the end. It will go at the end. Just. That should be okay. I think it's not a unique um, 130. So it looks like another one had it <laughs> for me. So 
thought I should move. But so in here. Okay, no problem. Yeah. ID is no no big issue. Yeah. So when I go back to my AP set now, if I go to edit point info. I'd also want to make sure that I go ahead and select whatever I wanted in there. So I could go gasoline engine or can I have one of the ones I had before that. Ah, and uh, equipment type is uh, the same truck or car? This this is more customization again. So again, tell the user exactly what they're looking at. Um, but really, it doesn't matter if they do anything. So since I'm doing engine, gasoline, select on that one, kind of tells me what I'm looking at. But again, does not influence any of the end results. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much the extent of what you need to do. There's a lot of tabs in here you can kind of further look at, like the schedule. You can set how often you want to do uh, testing, uh, test filter. Just make sure all these are checked off on these sides, because I think you can lose data if you do that. So just make sure they're checked off. Uh, internal. I'd never really go this far, but a lot of customization you can do on here as far as looking at what you're looking at. And then again, con just continue more. Uh, more and more. <laughs> more customization you can do that okay. you can just put in there. You can look at what my turbine blades, what are they made out of. So if you're looking at elemental spectroscopy, if you suddenly had a lot of titanium, mm. you could say, let's see, you have all this stuff here. That's going to be my turbine blades because I don't see titanium anywhere else. So something's chipping those away. So just customization will not influence anything long term. The things you want to put in here, uh, definitely, is description, what, what's the name you're going to put it, and then these AP set and alarm set. Okay. So um, before I move on to my sample, there's now, one. Now after you, you made all of this change, uh, I didn't see any save icon or something like that. It will be saved automatically or what? Uh, yeah, it will be saved automatically. Mm -hmm. The only exception for that is the AP set. Um, as I mentioned, that's very important. If you uh, deselect something, it will you'll lose a lot of data. So for that one, you have to click something for it to actually change mm -hmm. any changes. So if I go to my, my AP set here mm -hmm. and go to profile setup, if I were to select or unselect something, I then want to go ahead and update changes. I see. Here, yeah, cannot I can't uh, select the magnets. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. I just I deselect it so I could have something to change. I must. Um, and then uh, it will reset. warn me that um, one, if you had a net version, that everyone else would need to leave it. Okay. But you also want to sometimes scan back the database because you may lose information a lot if you move forward with that. And then just make sure that you are aware that selecting something you will lose information okay. so um, there's one other very important thing for you to do on this as well and that is assigning a substance ID and this is the kind of the level that you want to do it um, so while I'm looking at my engine oil I would then want to go to uh, assign a oil to it but before I go to assign reference, I would actually want to set up the oil in my system. So if I go to reference database, which is this bottom left tab, and this is in the manual as well. Um, it walks me through that there's a lot of different supplies in here right now existing. So I can see here that um, I have a whole bunch of supplies, oil, Speedway, Texaco. Uh, I can also create my own supplies if I wanted to. If you remember the training last week, I created my own list, Spectral Scientific, with the uh, specific brand yeah, name, right. brand pen, sample by the 924214, and then the actual sample. The reason why I want to reference this is two reasons. If I'm using a existing oil, just want to confirm that it does have a already a substance ID. So for a lot of these, we do already. We kind of made it with um, Emerson. See, for example, this sample HATCO engine oil mill PRF is something that's in our database. It has a substance ID 336. And so uh, substance ID, it will be assigned automatically? If it's, if, if, if if it's, it's already in the fluid scan. In the fluid scan, like shell or anything, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, maybe uh, the shell is there, 
but uh, my this oil is not there. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, add into that. Yeah. So just like shell. I did last time, I could if I if you were talking about shell, uh -huh. that's A50. So, yeah. so I'm gonna go ahead and look on that. Do you know what brand? It's SAE. Yeah. Um, doesn't tell us what brand. But even if we had no idea what it was, we could go ahead and just simply right click, add brand, add brand name. name, and just say my oil, because I don't know what the brand name is. Okay. And then just click on again, oil description, and just like that, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name, S A E. It will be uh, assigned to Shell yeah. only, not anywhere else. Um. Yeah, it's uh, already there. I'm it's going to be there, correct, for your user, but for your thing. But ultimately, this doesn't affect anything. It's just for you to reference it correctly. So, like I said, I could create my whole new. If I was a customer, I could create a whole new kind of supplier name for my oils, and I could have Shell, Mobile, and all that stuff in there, just so all my oils are on one location, one level. I could do that if I wanted to. But you can put I can it anywhere you want. Uh, rename any any one of them. Because uh, for this one, I will have to mm -hmm. uh, make uh, many more changes in the yep, you can. software. If uh, I select any one of them and give it it's a new name, yep. so everything would be there. You can edit it as much as you want. It won't affect anything in results. As again, it's just customization. Just customization. Okay. But the thing you do want to make sure is you want to go ahead and add a reference sample once you get to that point. Now, this is what you're going to be referencing against. Okay. So, so once you're in there, it should be reference oil. It should be a fresh oil. Uh, typically for fluid scans, we recommend that you always go ahead and create your own user fluids. So ideally, they should always be new fluids. So if I want to go ahead and go in here and create it, if I create my own user fluid, I get my new substance ID in there. It will be assigned automatically. Substance um, ID, or I'll have to assign it. Do you remember how to get your substance ID? I'm quizzing you now. This is what I taught last week. How yeah, well did you pay yeah, attention yeah. to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. Uh, I have to uh, assign it in the fluid scan. Mm -hmm. And then, if I want you to recover the Brad Pen user fluid that I gave you last week, mm -hmm. where would you find that user ID? Utility. Utility is very good. Mm -hmm. No, nope, not managed measurements. Mm -hmm. No. I think something like about or something like that. I'll, I'll kind of help you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, go yeah, back right. to utilities. Oh, utility. Utilities. Go to utilities. Utilities. First. You gotta go to manage fluids because you're looking at user fluids. Mm -hmm. So top, top on there. Manage fluids. And then if you go to edit user fluid. Mm -hmm. New user. Uh, no, we o this is Ed already existing. Edit, fluid. edit user fluid. So if we yes. go to edit user fluid. Yes, this, this, this is this, the one. This, uh, mm -hmm. this menu. Is it doing anything? No. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. it's thinking. Now you can see there's only one in there, so it's easy to find. Yes. There are two. And the, uh, now let's go to SS Brad 10. That's the one we want. Yes. Yes, this one. Substance ID is. 211555. So if we look at the one I made last week in my class, if we go here, go to Trend Info. We see that the substance ID does have the correct substance ID no, on no, it. No, no, no. But uh, this substance ID, uh, I'll assign or it will be automatically done? The fluid scan will sign. And then you put it in, you have to put okay. it into the oil view. When we create a new user fluid scan, it mm -hmm. will be assigned, is it right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we have to put it, yeah. write it in a paper so that... Yeah, the fluid scan yeah. will give you the user, uh, I, the substance ID when you create a new user fluid. You have to kind of, it's recommended that as you create them, you go ahead and maybe put an Excel sheet just so they're easier to find in the future. So you don't have to find 
dedicate three minutes to each one of the cover. Um, and then when you go into here, you can go ahead and create the, those user fluids as necessary, and you can put those substance IDs as necessary. And how you can put it here? It's very simple. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and click on it. That's it. And wow. type it in. Update or just enter? Just, just enter, mm -hmm. and it's going to be saved. Mm -hmm. um, a few points on this. What we're looking at right now is kind of your reference fluid. Again, this is customization. You don't need to put anything in there except for the substance ID, which mm -hmm. only relates to the fluid scans, telling it the fluid scan what oil to jump to. Mm -hmm. So, alt if you wanted to, though, you could go ahead and bring out the certification sheet and put in all the other information what's base new unused oil. So I could say what the base TPN value is, uh, what a brand new oil should burn for the elemental analysis. Uh, new dielectric constant, all those things. So just customization, but once I have that substance ID in there, I'll need, then need to go back to my user database, select my point, then hit assign reference. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go select that point I just added. Once I select something I can assign, it'll let me set reference. And now when I highlight the point and I go to trend info, I'm sorry, I'm going to create a sample. When I have the sample highlighted underneath trend info, you'll be able to see what I have referencing for fluid. Mm. Now, what happens if you do not assign a reference oil with a substance ID? Oh. Not much. Um, the only thing that's going to happen is your fluid scan, when you hit the start button underneath I'm ready to run a test, it's going to come up with an error message on the unit saying, cannot find substance ID zero, um, and then it'll allow you to pick what fluid you want to pick. Um, with the substance ID, when you hit start, it's going to go straight to running the measurement because it already knows what you're going to run. So correct procedure is to assign substance ID because it saves the customer a lot of clicking, but ultimately it will not restrict them from using the instrument in any way. Just a little bit more of a hassle. So once you have that in there, you're actually ready to go ahead and run samples, no problem. Suppose I want to run all three sample, uh, all, all three instruments, mm -hmm. same fluid. Same what? Same fluid, same oil. Yeah. So the uh, the result will be on the same page, or uh, with the trending. If I have it already in the database. The trend info. If you're on the trend info, this will show anything that's associated with that sample point. Uh, earlier results will be there. Yep, and all any other results, like if I add another sample here, uh -huh. you're going to see another column gets created. Uh -huh. So all of it is showing there for trend. Uh, just likewise, on the special scientific tab, if you go to your report, um, you will be able to select which ones you want to see on that report. It's not going to show me anything right now because it's all blank, so it's going to be very boring, but this is what you see. Mm. And you can uh, you can select up to five there for this report. Okay. Now, other things to point out, um, especially since you're doing installation, um, you kind of had units that already were existing, so it's a little bit easier. If I go ahead and open up my LNF software, a lot of times when people first install, is that on? Yes, it's on. Okay. It's on. Okay. We already okay. switched it off and done again. Right. Excellent. Uh, so we'll see if it passes that. Um, but before I go on that one, if we turn our attention to the fluid scan, you'll see that if I go to utilities, there is disable oil view yes. link. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that if you just enabled. Yep, enabled. if you turn on your uh, oil view and you're seeing that this is disconnected, this is one of the first things and easiest things for you to check. Just make sure that it's enabled. Actually, habits have it with us, and we, mm -hmm. we only did enable. Especially during uh, fresh installation. That's mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do. Good, good. <coughs> um, 
Oil View will also have, I'm sorry, LNF will also have a similar. If you go to Options, and if you go to Export Control, you'll have Enable Q5300 Interface. You want to make sure that is selected so you can have communication between the two. If we unselect it, it will disconnect it from the system. And that is correct. Just to try. If we, uh, press all, let's see, we're connected. We are connected right now. If I go ahead, 